I'm Howard Waldman, living in Merrill's Inlet, South Carolina. I formerly came from Long Island, New York. My trip to the island on the other flight, November 10th, was the most outstanding, impressive, highly organized, highly organized by Captain Burt and Gigi Castle, mm -hmm. the nth degree. Matter of fact, when I got the application, I don't know what medications I was taking. I called them and said, what do you care what medications I'm taking? It's a short flight. <laughs> Everybody on that flight, she said, is 80 or 90 years old. Yeah. And we'll be prepared. We have a doctor on board. We have nurses on board. That short flight could be a very long flight in some cases. It's just unbelievable. From the arrival of the airport, with assistance in getting to the airport, they service. There's a wonderful array of items in uh, there, six o'clock in the morning at the airport. For, yeah. for, and yet when we got on the plane, they handed us yogurt and other refreshments again. We were never hungry, were we? You know, <laughs> the Myrtle Beach Fire Department, the captain said, gentlemen, before we take off, the Myrtle Beach Fire Department is honoring us with a spray. And two fire trucks spread across the plane a spray of water. That was really cool. Arrival in Washington, I told my associate uh, sitting next to me, we're going to have a spray of arrival. We had a departure. How do you know? I said, look down there, there's two fire trucks. <laughs> we were never expected. When we saw, uh, before, just as you're getting off the plane, each of the military services had eight men shaking our hands, thanking you for your, you made an aisle, you walked between the aisle, thanking us for our service. Almost floored when we got into the terminal. There was a 14 piece brass fan playing, hundreds of flags, and you walk between these flags, and people would shake your hand, thank you for your service. Some women got emotional and took you around and said, thank you for your service. It was absolutely uh, breathtaking. He could not stop talking about what a wonderful time he had. My father was a prisoner of war um, almost 18 months in Germany. Uh, an unforgettable uh, time for him that when I found out about the honor flight in Myrtle Beach and I knew Bert and Gigi Castle, um, I called and said, sign me up. And that's how I became a guardian. Mm -hmm. And um, it was an opportunity that I looked so forward to but never knew how life-changing it would be for me. And from, from the next generation, you know, who studied World War II in high school, and I have to admit I didn't pay as close a, of attention as I should have, but it, for me, for my generation, was, was a true walk in history. A tremendous impact the whole world made um, towards our freedom. When I found out that I was going to be talking to you, one of the things that I really want to find out more about is January 26, 1944. Can you tell me more about it? January 26, 1944 was a ill night. 1 a.m. Now, Blingy Harbor, New Britain, was a Japanese uh, naval harbor there. We had been scouting that night and uh, Double mission. A submarine, a Japanese submarine was the area and a destroyer. We spotted the destroyer. But we could never be in position to torpedo him. We were here, they were there, they were here. We could never. I called the captain down. I says, Look at this chart. I was the navigator of the ship. They're here, we're here, they're there, we're here, they're there, they're here. They have something aboard to know where we are in the night. They're not in the Black Sea. We waited an hour and a half, and that was our error. That alerted their shore batteries. And the shore batteries stopped firing us. One ten lost the entire crew except three of us. I woke up in a tent. I don't know how I got there. Last thing I remember, I was standing on the bow of the boat, and the whole boat was gone. The only thing left was there. They told me I'm in an Army field hospital. I I'm in the Navy. How did I get here? PT bro brought you in here. The Navy knows you're here. They're calling every day. We'll call and tell them you're awake. What do you mean every day? How long am I here? You're here five days. They were all killed except the engineer that I saved the torpedo man and myself. 
How many were on the boat altogether? We have 14 that night. Okay. We got to the top of the steps in Myrtle Beach and they stopped us, Bert stopped us, and I was thinking, oh my goodness, we're so tired. It's, we, you know, it's time to go home. And little did we know that when we went down the escalator, all those people were waiting and cheering and, and waving flags and holding signs. And, and what I thought also was interesting was when we were in Washington, total strangers were coming up. Total, total strangers in the airport were coming up to, to all of you and extending their hands and, and saying thank you for your service. And that, that just demonstrated to me the, the, the gravity of, of the, the whole trip. Gifts from the uh, senior knitting circle, the lap robe, notes from kindergarten children, first grade and middle school, thanking us for the for the uh, our service. It's a credit to the organizer, credit to the people that supported them. Because mm -hmm. naturally, a, a unit like this needed a lot of support from a lot of volunteers. Guardians paid five hundred dollars to be a, a guardian, which floored me when I learned about that. But it was really a, a best thing. A blast hurrah, they say. A blast hurrah. Absolutely.